Good morning, Mount Off Church. It's a Tuesday morning devotion, and uh, we're in 1 Samuel chapter 17 this week. Hope you caught the first video from the pastor on Monday as he got everything started and framed up for us tonight, or today, rather. I do that every week, don't I? Uh, we're going to look at uh, verses 11 through 30, and... I know uh, the title of our devotion uh, is going to be Facing Giants. And, um, you know, the pastor mentioned how we all have giants in our lives from time to time. And <clears throat> one we're going to look at today uh, is going to be dealing with discouragement. I thought that one was, I thought that was the Lord always knows what we need and what's, uh, what each one of us needs to teach on, right? <laughs> Because that is me sometimes, you know, dealing with discouragement. I'm, I'm very, very easily discouraged from time to time. And um, I thought the first one is our pastor touched on fear uh, was so great. I hope you got to be with us Sunday and watch Brother Jason's message. And uh, Jason touched on so much of that, too, and fear in our lives. And, uh, you know, but always following fear. Uh is usually discouragement most of the time anyway and so we're going to look at that tonight and uh, today first samuel 17 we're going to be in verse 11 through through 30 is where we're going to start and we're going to we're going to focus on discouragement tonight we will show you two different two different people here uh in discouragement and and how that can affect us uh i hope if we can get through this so uh verse 11 it says when saul and all israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and they were greatly afraid. So what did they hear? And and, and the pastor finished up with the first 10 in the first one, the uh, first devotion. And the Philistine, you know, Goliath is who we're talking about, the big giant. Uh, he said, I defy the armies uh, of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. And so this is where we're picking up here in 11. It says when they heard that, they were dismayed and they were greatly afraid and he touched on fear, but tonight, today's discouragement. So what does it mean to be dis, dismayed, to begin to, to get disheartened or to get anxious? Uh, and I said a minute ago, and, and I, I truly believe this, discouragement will usually follow fear. Uh, once fear starts to creep in and the longer it's there, uh, it starts to bring discouragement. We start to lose hope. We start to get beat down right so that's what happened here and i'm going to read through uh, quite a bit of verses i'm not going to try to cover them all because we're going to go all the way to verse 30 and i want to talk some about uh, the discouragement here but give you a little quick background so we're getting ready to see david uh you know we've heard the story of david and goliath so now Dave, david's coming on the scene here uh, in verse 12 it says now david was the son of an if Ephra, ephrathite of bethlehem judah, judah whose name was Jesse. So David was Jesse's son. Jesse had eight sons. And the man went out among men for an old man in the days of Saul. Jesse was getting up in age and he was old. And it says, And the three eldest sons of Jesse, they went and followed Saul to the battle. And the names of, uh, of his three sons that went to the battle were Eliab, the firstborn. Keep that in mind. He's the oldest. You're right. He's he's the oldest of the family. He's, he's the one that's going to know everything he's the he's the head honcho of all the brothers next to him was abinadad and the third was shema david was the youngest david was the youngest the three the three eldest they followed saul uh to the battle uh but david went and returned from saul to feed his father's sheep at bethlehem that was the end of verse 15 <clears throat> okay so now let's look at verse 16 and the philistine drew near morning and evening morning and evening and he presented himself for 40 days okay 40 days this has been going on as they're down here in the trenches they're down here in the middle of the battle and, and as saul's led them down here and and right amongst all this david's not on scene yet but morning and evening goliath is coming out and do you remember what verse uh, the first devotion said that the pastor read in verse 8 you go back and look at that it says 
Verse 8, he stood and cried to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why are you come out to set, to set your battle in array? Am I not a Philistine? And ye servants to Saul, choose you a man for whom you let come down to me. If you be able to fight with me and to kill me, I'll be your servants. If not, you're going to be our servants. So every day for 40 days, every morning, every evening, he's coming out. And he's standing in the presence of them. And things start to take a toll on David's brothers and all those that were there. The pastor talked in the first one about how uh, how fear creeps in when when we're not when we're not being sober and we're not awake in our spiritual lives and how that creeps in. And it's the same thing that happened here. This begins to slowly creep in day after day and the fear he come. And then after a time period over 40 days, discouragement starts to creep in. The longest situ situations feed more discouragement. The longer we let it go, the longer that we're in that situation, it tends to feed discouragement because we start how many times have we prayed for something and we pray and we pray and we pray and we want God to answer it just like that. And sometimes he does, right? Sometimes he does. But then there's other times that it feels like we go through those battles and it seems like there's just no end to it. And I've shared some of those stories with you all uh, before about the things that I went through with Lauren. And, you know, it seemed like there for a while, every time we took a step forward, it was three steps back. And then, you know, we kept wondering, how long is this going to get out, going to last before we get out of this? And it seems to, to, to feed more into discouragement the longer those situations go. So this has been going on for 40 days, morning and night, this guy's coming to him. Let's go to verse 17. And Jesse, David's dad, <clears throat> he said unto David, Take now for thy brethren an epith of, of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run to the camp to thy brethren. Carry these ten cheeses and to the captain of, the thou, of their thousand and look how thy brethren fare. Look how by, thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Bring me back some news. Go, go ask them how they're doing. Take them this food, see how they're doing and come back and let me know that he, he was just asking him to report. And so the next few verses, it goes on down there, and uh, I'm not going to read those. I want to skip through them so, just for, for time's sake. But it says in uh, verse 20, David rose up early in the morning. He left his sheep with a keeper. Okay, keep that in mind. As we get down here in a minute and look at David, I want you to keep in mind that David always was trying to do the right thing. David just didn't take off and say, all right, Dad sent me to the battle to go see what the brothers are going. I get to see what's happening. I get to, I get to, you know, put my feet on the ground right in the midst of all of them and go to the camp. And I get to see all this, everything that everybody's talking about. I get to be there. And he didn't just run off. He took care of his job. He took care of what he was supposed to do, of what he was committed to do. And he was determined to make sure that the sheep were all right. So he left them with a keeper. He left, rose up early and he went like his daddy told him. And then he gets there. He says, when he gets down to the battle, he says, David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper. And he ran to the army and he came and saluted his brother in verse 22. So he goes up to him. He gets there. He takes care of the sheep, leaves him with a keeper. He goes down. He gets to the middle of the battle. He goes up to check on his brothers. Verse 23. This is where we're going to pick up here. He says, he said, talk with them. Behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name out of the armies of the Philistines and spoke, spake according to the same words, and David heard him. David heard him. So the same thing he had been saying every day, morning and evening for 40 days, he shows up at the time that David is there, early in the morning. It was it was Goliath's morning, morning treat to come out to him, and David had just showed up. And when David gets there and he hears that, it says in verse 23, David heard him, but David also seen verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were sore afraid. So David begins to see the fear. He begins to see in the fear in someone else. Be, be mindful here that when we see fear in others, sometimes that can bring fear into our life. Sometimes that can bring discouragement into our life when we see that. But I want you to watch David's reaction. Remember, David was, he, he was, dedicated to what he was doing, okay? David spoke to the men in verse 26 that stood by him saying, what shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? 
and taketh away the reproach from Israel. Notice where David's heart was at. It wasn't about, it wasn't about the battle. It wasn't about how much he could go back and tell his dad. When he heard what Goliath said, when he heard that that was calling out and he seen the look on those men's face, David was bringing up to be a leader right here. David was stepping forth and he was saying, okay, everyone else is discouraged. Everyone else is beginning to fear. Why? Let's stand up here. Somebody has to take a stand. Someone has to lead the way. So what happens? What shall be done to the man that takes away the reproach from Israel? What's going to be done to the man that fixes all this? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And when David heard what he was saying and he was crying out that what, what Goliath was saying, he knew something had to be done. Okay, keep that in mind. David spoke to those that were by him and he asked them what's going to be done. Here's the, here's the key point. It's easy to find discouragement when we're taking a step forward to serve. How many times? How many times if, if you're watching this that you said, well, I've tried to do this and I've tried to do that and it's just never worked out. Uh, I've got shot down. Um, you know, I failed. I've made a mistake. Sometimes when we when we're taking out a step, when we're taking a step to step out of our comfort zone to get out to where God wants us to be. Sometimes that's the easiest places to find discouragement. And it could have happened so easily here with David. Look here at verse 28. And Eliab, his eldest brother, remember I told you before, he was the oldest. You know how the old ones are, right? The older, if you got older brothers and sisters, they're the ones, they're the ones that know, right? They're, they're, the, they're the boss. Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, when David was talking to him, and Eliab's anger was kindled against David. He got mad. He got mad. Here's one thing to look at. Sometimes when we're in a place of discouragement or we think something can't be done, Eliab was full of fear. For 40 days, he had heard Goliath day and night, and he was he was scared. He was worried. He was nervous. And then all of a sudden, someone steps up, steps up to take charge, and it's his brother. It's David. And look at, look at what happens here. Why comest thou down hither? Why are you even here, David? You shouldn't be here. With whom did you leave the sheep in the wilderness? Isn't that, look how easy, look how easy David could have got discouraged here. Eliab is, he's already there. He's done, went through the fear part and he's discouraged. And now he's just leading it on to someone else. And we have to be so careful how we do that. But look what he says. Why are you even here? Whom did you, who did you leave the sheep with? He's starting to try to find any fault that he can in David. He didn't know David had left him with a keeper, but David was focused and determined on what he was supposed to be doing. He was doing the right thing. And then look what else he says. I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thy heart. I know what you're here for. I know why you're here. David had never told him yet, hey, dad sent me down here. I brought y'all food. He wants to check on you. I'm going to go back and give him a report. The only thing he seen was David was stepping up to be a leader here. He says, I know your heart. For thou comest down that thou might see the battle. You're just, you're just being nosy. You're the nosy little brother who's trying to get right in the middle of everything. He said, I know what you're doing. Listen, listen to this one. Okay. The church has too many Eliabs today. The church today has too many. There is too many across the church in this country today. There's too many people that are that are just more worried about bringing down and calling things out than they are. You know what Eliab should have done? What should his reaction have been? You know what he should have done? He said, you know what, brother? You're right. You're right, little brother. Let's go. I'm with you. If you want to go take him on, I'm going to stand by your side. But we have too many today that say this can't be done or it should be done this way or it should be done that way. You shouldn't even be here. We have too much of that today. Look what this discouragement could have caused. What would have happened? What would have happened if David would have got so discouraged and he got beaten down by what his brother was saying and he left? What would have happened if he would just, you know, put his head down? 
And he, he was just so disappointed. God reserves the right to use those that are willing to serve. I used that before, uh, maybe a year or so ago, in a in another lesson that I taught on. And God reserves, and, and you know, it just come back to me, but that was with Paul and Barnabas, you know, and, and Paul, uh, you know, didn't, Paul didn't want John Mark to go. Barnabas did. And we've got to be so careful. And I'm not going to go all the way down, back into that lesson, but we've got to remember God reserves the right to use those that are willing to serve. Now, that doesn't mean that just any person that pops up in the church or any person that would have come down to the battle here uh, and said, well, I'll do this or I'll do that. If, if they seen that David was doing it with the right heart, Remember, remember what he said? Define the armies of the living God. That should have told them David's heart was in the right place. And when we see that, and we see leaders come up and those that want to serve and those that are willing to do things the right way according to God's word and to serve him. God reserves the right to use those. We're not the ones that get to say that, right? Uh, that's not to say, now don't get me wrong, I think in, in leadership, in, in, in your pastors and in those that, that lead in the church, I think they need to bring up the leaders and they need to set those leaders in places where they need to be. But just because we're on the sidelines and we don't want to get in the middle of the battle doesn't mean we shouldn't say that David shouldn't be fighting the battle, right? Okay, let me go on. Last point. And David said, what have I now done? What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? I, I try to put myself where David is at. I try to think about where David is at at this point. And he's come down here and all he was doing was exactly what his father had asked him to do. He come to, to bring them food, to bring food for the his brothers, for the captains. And all he was doing is just come take their pledge to find out, to get a report of how they were doing. And then take it back to his dad and hopefully give his dad good news. He was doing that. And when he comes down here and he sees the discouragement, he sees the fear and he sees the things that are going on. And he sees that Goliath is defying the armies of the living God. He looks at his brother. And I can almost see there's probably a, there's probably some hurt there. There's probably discouragement that's trying to break in. Um, that's trying to break in on David's spirit. But he looks and he says, is there not a cause? We have to be so careful. Those that are closest with us, well, I'll get to that in just a second, but how many have left the battle because of discouragement? What if David would have got discouraged and he turned around and left? How about you? Where are you at right now? Have you left the battle because somebody else discouraged you? Or have you left the battle because you're, you're, you've just been in that place too long? And you've heard it day and day, day in and day day out, and, and fear has crept in, and then all of a sudden now you started to lose hope, just like Eliab and the other brothers and all those that were on the front lines, and they begin to lose hope, and all of a sudden they found their place in a big in a big spot of discouragement. How many of us have left? How many of us have left the battle because we've been discouraged? It's time to get back in the battle, right? Last point. Those closest to us can bring the most discouragement. Church, we have to be so careful to uplift our brothers and sisters in Christ. Those that are wanting to serve and those that know that there's a cause, we have to be so careful not to bring them discouragement. And it's so easy. It's it's our nature. Some of us, that's our, our nature. And we just, you know, you've been around those people that just, oh, it's doom and gloom all the time, right? Let's don't be like that. Let's don't be an Eliab. Let's let's jump in and say, you know what? I'll go with you. Uh, how many stones you need? Let me let me pick a few up for you right here. Um, there's so many things that we can do to jump in the battle to help others to help others overcome discouragement. You know what? There was there was a big thing that David done right here that took away a lot of discouragement from a lot of other people that was in the middle of that battle. What about you? Are you taking any discouragement away from anybody or are you feeding into theirs? Okay, I hope you got something out of this. It's a good study for me. I love this I love this uh, scripture through here in the story of David. Um, I hope you guys have a great week. 
Uh, we're praying for you. Continue to pray for us. Let's continue to pray for our country, our nation. Continue to pray for your leaders of your church. Pray for our pastor, his family. We love you guys, and we hope you have a great week.